How are we doing down poor? Wow, wow. I mean, it's sort of like, I look at the church news and it's like, it is all happening. It's saying circles are launching. Circles were launched. We 31 women are meeting. They did meet, but they're going to meet again. Praise God. Isn't it great? This, April's been hectic. I feel like, uh, I feel like February, March, everything jammed into April. And they've got Easter. Come on. Easter is exciting. Easter is powerful. And uh, you better watch out. Uh, we're doing something. I mean, I think I said this last week, but we haven't had an in-person Easter service in two years. Wow. Oh, you better watch out. There's some, there's some things lined up for Easter that I think you do not want to miss out. As Pastor Leah said, no FOMO, just jo- JOMO. <laughs> so uh, join in the joy. Uh, and so I think it'll be powerful, powerful, powerful. I heard Thursday night was good. Was it? I'm not sure. <laughs> Walnut salad. Something with the chicken. It was amazing. There was, there was so many, they, they cooked so many chicken. There was a chicken shortened in Woolworths. That's what I heard. <laughs> Chooks running everywhere. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But it was pretty cool. It was honestly pretty cool. I, I was here through and through in the, in the building, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Thursday morning. Uh, and I did, I did sneak in Thursday night, uh, created, used the kids as an excuse to come. You know, Leah, the kids drive me crazy. I'm coming. So, so I came right at the end. And uh, man, it was such a joy just to see. Uh, it felt like the, the girls didn't want to go. They were just here, just hanging out. Uh, some of the husbands are nodding their head. That's right. <laughs> One hour over time. But uh, it's amazing how beautiful it is when we gather together, you know. And I've missed it. Yesterday, this weekend's been hectic. Uh, I was speaking at a conference in another part of the world. And then last night, some of us went to Planet Shakers. They were here in Brisbane. And it's just great to see, you know, like we haven't had all of this stuff for two or two and a half, close to three years. And it's just beautiful for God's children to gather together. And I, I do come bearing news because sometimes we, some of us have been living under the shadow of all this isolation and this and that. Well, God's doing something. He is rebuilding. He is restoring. He is refreshing. He is reviving. He is renewing. I've come bearing good news. That's what He is doing. And uh, maybe we can live in the, in the tone. It's sort of like when, you, when you've had winter for so long, now, the jumper is not necessity, it's part of the wardrobe, right? Take off the jumper, you know what I'm saying? Put on the muscle shirt, you know? There's a weather change on its way. Revival's on its way. Revival's here, he's rebuilding. And I'm just glad you're here because we are in vision mode. It feels awkward because February is when we usually talk about vision, but you know what? Every time is a great time to talk about vision. The moment I jump into a car, I need to have vision to know where I'm going. So any time is appropriate for vision. And so we're going to continue over the next couple of weeks. Next week, obviously, being Easter, I want to focus on what it is. We will have communion uh, for Friday morning. So that's going to be fantastic. Watch out. Uh, it's going to be beautiful. Again, that's something we haven't really been able to do together as a church family. So that's going to be amazing Friday. And then Sunday, 10 o'clock. So Friday, 10 o'clock. Sunday, 10 o'clock. And so we're going to have that. For, and then again, we're going to jump back on just vision and direction and all of that. Uh, and so last week was sort of week one. And I, I shared on herd immunity. And um, what that was, was the power of when we come together, uh, what begins to happen. Uh, herd immunity is when there's a protection that we come together. We studied that there's healing among the herd. We, we heal better when we are together. Uh, you know, we, we are strengthened when we are together. Giftings and callings and skill sets rise up, come up to the surface when we are together. And I had such a great response. People were sharing about how it spoke to them personally. And, and uh, you know, as part of our vision in this coming year and the years to come, but specifically this year, we want to really focus on our circles being strengthened. Uh, in fact, Pastor Lee and I, we will be running our own circles for the circle leaders. We identified a few circle leaders last week, and we want to make sure that they're strengthened and we're sort of modeling what we are encouraging you to be a part of. So I just, I just would love if every single person in this room is in a circle. So if you're not in one, 
uh, find out at the info, info desk for more information, sign in one, join in one. It's going to be amazing uh, for someone to just, you know, you can lean on and, 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 and someone will check in on you and make sure you're strengthened because you know what? Every day, anything can happen. And Sunday is great, but next Sunday is seven days from now and a lot can happen in between those seven days. But when you're in a circle, there's a sense of connection and community and strengthening and encouragement that comes with it. And so thinking about circles, I was thinking about Thursday night with, with our women when they gathered here together. You know, what, what was it special? Yes, the food was great. The walnut salad was fantastic. The special juice with pineapple in it that we came to know about later was fantastic. You know, it was all happening. But the reason why, the reason why, I'm just kidding. The reason why, uh, the reason why we come together, it's not just for the food. It's not just for all of that. It's, it's because, like, imagine I turned up and there's like salad and special juices and, you know, nice chicken. It's great. But imagine you sitting in an empty room just eating a meal. Like, who wants that, right? Like, maybe if you're a food blogger, but, but for the rest of us, like, I don't want that. I'm there, like, I will, take, I, will take, I will take a meat pie with you. A meat pie with Regan is better than a five-course meal on my own. You know what I'm saying? So it's not about, it's not about just that. It's about us together. But what we got to understand is the reason why V31 and Thursday was so fantastic was because we got to do it in a place. Imagine if we called for a meeting and it was out in the car park and you were like, Pastor Alvin, I, I love it, but uh, you know, really the weather doesn't allow. The reason why we're all excited is because we have a place to meet. There were people that could come here on a Tuesday and people could have set, set up on a Wednesday. In fact, there were a team here till 12 a.m. on Wednesday night doing some things around the room. It was almost like we had batches of teams. The boys come here, they have a late night. The girls come here in the morning, they have a great start. And, and it was just, but, but the whole thing was, the, the point is, there was a point of connection. And that was this building. And so this morning, I want to, as part of our vision, I want to talk about our building, but I want you to change your thinking because so many times when I just say building, people think about physical structures, pillars, roof, flooring, tiles, toilets, you know, lighting, staircases, windows, doors, I was going to say chicken cabinet, no kitchen cabinets, you know, that's what we think about, right? No, 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 no. I, I want us to reform that thinking. And as I was praying, I was, I was very careful that I don't want us to just give, give us an idea of just this building. And I got these words as I was praying. And the words were architectural evangelism. And that's the title of my message, architectural evangelism. I began to feel God was putting in my heart as I was preparing for vision over the last couple of weeks. And we've been praying hard specifically about this building that, that as we talk about it, that, that your minds, our minds would not be about finishing a task or completing a project, but rather recognizing this building as an avenue for lost people to find Jesus, for people that don't know about Jesus to find this place as a hub and, and, and to identify who Jesus is because of the actual physical presence of this building. And if you know, we live in challenging times. It is difficult to get a building. It's not as easy. Back in the day when they would plan a town, they would, they, would have a, they would have an RSL, they would have a bank, they would have a school, and they would have a church. That was part of the town planning committee. Now, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Maccas, it's 15,000 gyms, it's 3,000 yoga centers, 200 cafes, uh, a Kmart, and no church. Right? It's changed. And, and to now have this opportunity where we are now in a building that's legally recognized as a place of worship. I don't know about you. If you're waiting for a miracle, that is a miracle. So now we've been given this opportunity. And, 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 and yes... We're living in extraordinary times, but it's an extraordinary time that the church rose up to do extraordinary things. It's never in the times. If you look at some of the greatest churches, they were built in a time of recession. Last night, we were at Hope Center. Hope Center is around 85, 90 years old. That church was built during the recession, during the Great Depression, right? And, and I heard there was a time they did a fundraiser 
And they took an offering. This is not even part of my message. I'm just going somewhere. I love it. They took up an offering and the, and the, and the board went and counted the offering. It wasn't enough. They came back, took up another offering, same service. They ended up taking eight offerings in one service. And here we are last night. Let's change the world. Let's do it together. Russell Evans dancing. I'm dancing. Why? Because somebody gave in the middle of a recession. What would it be like for the next generation to dance and praise and see a move of God? Because we rose up in 2022 to give and to be a part of this incredible structure that declares the glory of God. I read an article or read read a study that said that there are around 30,000 cars that drive on this road every couple of days. As I look across this building and look across outside, apart from a bunch of flags, I don't know if anybody knows that there's a church that meets here and I know where to come to church. You know where to come to church. You, you, you know how to get here. We don't need signage to lead us here, but we do need some sort of signage that tells people we are here to stay, that tells our community we're not just bumping in and bumping out or setting up a tent, but we are here declaring hope through the north side of Brisbane. And so that's why we must get behind the vision for not for our sake, but for people that are not yet here. I was thinking about this building. You know, this building has been an absolute inconvenience for me. (laughs) When this building came about, and I say this, and it seems like, well, Pastor, you've got no faith. And I want to say this from the bottom of my heart and what I'm trying to say. In January of 2021, we found ourselves in an extraordinary place. Our building that we, that we had at that point, we could not meet because of the whole COVID restrictions and four, one person per square meter. We could only have 35 people in there. So we had that and we were meeting in a hotel. So we began to realize that there might be a period of time where we won't have a building. As a leadership team and as a board, we agreed on maybe for a season, maybe God is saying, let's have portable church. Let's set up church somewhere. But we also recognized that we needed to have a midweek hub And so we were looking for a midweek hub, a small place that we could call an office, just in case people want to meet, people want to pray, people want to have some quiet, you know, discussions, people want to plan, just just literally, literally an office the size of the stage. That's all we were looking for. In the middle of that searching, this building came up and every, every step along the way, we were nervous because uh, you know, we were, we were in a massive transition. There was a big change over that happened in our leadership. People that were serving for a really long time felt, felt like it was time to move on and have a break. People that were part of planting the church felt it was time to just step back. You know, COVID had to set, uh, press the reset button for a lot of us. And it was a time of re-evaluation for many people, just like you've had to reevaluate your life. And we went through that. So in the midst of that reevaluation, you don't want to make any big decisions. But this building comes along and it ticked every box and even made more boxes than we even wanted that felt like it was a convenience and it was in the direction of where God was taking us. And so we said, let's just try this. We, literally, the whole negotiation of this building was, if God is in this, they will say yes. So the whole process of our, we negotiated and saw that as a sign because what we put on the deal was, some of the things we put in there was quite ridiculous and the landlord agreed and agreed and agreed. It was like, maybe God, you're in this. And then we said, you know what? Council's always been a pain. They're going to be difficult. We go to the council meeting and within 10 minutes, they're telling us how much it's going to cost for the process. If someone's talking to you about how much it's going to cost, it means that they've already said yes in their brains, right? And so we're like, man, everybody's on board. The council's got more faith than us. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm repenting as I'm in the council meeting. Oh, oh me of little faith, <laughs> you know? And it was like the council took us to school in terms of believing for this building. And so all along, it's been a miracle. And so I say all these things because the first thing I want to say as a senior pastor of this church is my identity is not in this building. My strength of security does not come from this building. We as a board have held this building with an open hand. Because it's the grace of God that's gotten, gotten us here. It's not strategic thinking. It's not great leadership. It's not my leadership skills. None of that has gotten us here. It's the grace of God. We are sitting on the grace of God. And so we have the openness and the transparency to hold this thing with an open hand. But because we're sitting on this 
incredible grace. Now we've got to see, God, you've led us so far. What can we do? Because to whom much is given, much is required. And so I began to pray and think about where, where God has taken us. And I began to look at this building. And I believe behind me, there's, there's a screen graphic that comes up with the title of my message called Architectural Evangelism. And I want you to change the way you look at this building because so many times when we're walking through the building, we see it as a big building. Oh, the auditorium is this, the kids' room is there, mother's room is there, the, 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 the foyer is this way. But, but I want you to stop seeing this building as a physical building. I want you to start seeing this building as a seed for our city. You're sitting in a seed right now. You're part of a seed right now. I want us to sow the seed into our city and I want us to see this building as a net that God has given us to throw across to go for another catch. Are you with me? I want us to recognize this building and see it as a seed and imagine what we can sow because so many times what happens is we, we give and we give and we believe and we believe and then we think we've entered our harvest and yes, we've had our harvest moment. Praise God for the harvest. But now we turn to take a seed from that harvest and we're going to sow that seed again saying there's thousands, there's hundreds others that are, that are going to see this and be a part of this but it, it, it's got to change the way we think. All right, we have not arrived where God has called us to arrive. We've arrived in one sense, but now we're departing into a new place. And I want us to begin to see this as a seed because I think that's when everything begins to change. I begin to think about uh, some of the things that, that the building can do. And, and what, what I love is some of the things we have done in, during Christmas of last year while the building was still way well and truly under construction. Because there are some things we can do. We gave away gifts on Christmas, uh, Christmas Eve and on Christmas Day. In fact, hopefully there's going to be a picture that comes up uh, of, of Elise giving a gift. You know, Elise, she's seven years old. She still says this was the best Christmas day of her life. You know, we've taken her all sorts of places. And Elise will take you to Disneyland. No, no, no. I want to be a part of making a difference. I want to be a part of giving 200 gifts to our community. And it was so great. In fact, it was supposed to be just Christmas Eve. But because we had such an overwhelming response, we canceled Christmas Day plans. We were here, not just us, but there was Tristan, Gemma, there were a few of us that were here, spent a few hours. Let me tell you, it was one of the most memorable Christmases I've had. And, 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 and we had people, uh, we, had, we had Hindus, we had uh, Iranians, Muslims come in, they want to take photos with the Christmas tree. Some of them want to see what the building is. They were like, is this a church or is this an event center? What is we had an opportunity to share. This is who we are. This is what we were about. And that's what we were all about. I, I want to say this, and I say this with, with absolute humility. If this, if this building is only going to be used on a Sunday, we actually don't need a building. We don't. If we think we need a building, we need to really consider our Christianity because we don't need a building. We can meet anywhere. If you're the church, we can meet anywhere. We can meet in a hotel right? We, we, we want to use this building as a means to open it five days, six days, seven days a week to let our community know we're here to create avenues for them to enter the space so that they can experience the love of Jesus. As part of that, as part of architectural evangelism, one of the things that, uh, that we have, have on our hearts is our cafe. As you know, our cafe is running. How many of you love our cafe? How great is the coffee? How good is the service? How friendly are the people? They write your name. They write your order. They find you. Even if you're in the darkest alley, they come, come after you. It's like reckless love happening right there through the cafe. You know, and, and, and I love it. But you know what? I would love for our cafe not just to be serving us and blessing us as, as amazing as that is, but how amazing would it be if our cafe is open five days a week or three days a week to start with and the opportunities that come with it. Now, this is not an opportunity just to make money. That's not the point. The point is we are letting the community know we are here because there's a greater possibility of a person that does not know Jesus who would come for a cup of coffee and at the end of the day find Christ. They'll walk into these doors, into the fort and say, hey, what is this place? Hey, imagine what it'd be like if we were worshiping and the presence of God is in this place through Sunday that someone would walk in on a Tuesday and would experience the grace that's on this house just in the interactions that they have in our foyer. There's a greater opportunity once they walked into our cafe that we can say, hey, just across these black doors is a church. 
You can walk through it. You've walked through the foyer. The walls haven't fallen down. There's a high possibility that it'll remain up if you walk through the black doors too. And there's a greater opportunity. They Maybe they're not ready for a Sunday, but what if it's a sister and we can say, hey, sister, we've got a five-course meal next Thursday called V31. We'd love V31. Doesn't sound like a church. Sounds very cool, very fancy. Louis Vuitton V31. Like, come along, you know, come along to this thing. And, and, and you know what I'm saying? There's opportunities out there if we can see the building not as a structure but as a seed. It's a seed. We don't serve the building. The building serves us. The building serves the purpose. It's a seed. We don't, we're, not, we're not consumers of the building. We are sowing the building to a greater harvest. I think when we begin to see that way, it transforms Everything. When I think about Jesus who met the woman at the well, he asks her for a glass of water. But really at the end of the day, if you read the story, I believe in John chapter 4, Jesus never ever ends up drinking the water. Because it was never about the water, but it was about the water of life. We may serve people a cup of coffee, but it's never about the cup of coffee. It's about finding Christ. And so I, I think we have an opportunity if you put our minds to this, I've got a, we've got a vision of a media school. We've had this for, for years now. But now finally we're in a place where we can have a facility that can facilitate educating young ones media. I'm not saying any, any teenager or any child needs to know how to use a camera. They can probably teach you a thing or two. But I think we can teach them how to use it as a positive influence. Just, I don't want to spend too much energy on this, but just yesterday I was in this facility preaching to a couple of thousand people in the U.S. at a conference through the power of media. Imagine the power of media, what we can do, and using that as a means, as an avenue to reach into schools. There are two schools just in a 1K radius to this church building. And, and imagine using this as an opportunity to engage them, to set up programs so we can get teenagers in, get young people in, to train them, use a camera, design things, and again, use this building as a seed to see a flow in the name of Jesus. I also believe that when we sign in and when we say yes, and today is not about signing a form. Today, I'm just speaking to your hearts. I'm just speaking for you to be prayerful as we prepare in the next couple of weeks, we will give you more clear information. We'll get you a booklet or something of that kind to give you clarity on what this is going to look like. Today, I'm just setting you up for what I believe you need to prepare ourselves. But there's a miracle that comes when you complete something. You know, you notice in the book of, in the, in the, in the children of Israel, there was a season when they met in tents. They had church in a tent and that was great and that was fantastic. But then there was another season when David came along and God said, build me a house. David started the structures, but Solomon completed the structure. David put in the seed, but Solomon brought it into completion. And what is interesting is David did all sorts of things, but the glory that Solomon brought in was greater than the glory that David ever brought. Because there's a different kind of glory that comes when we complete a task. In fact, we read in 1 Kings chapter 6, it says, The word of the Lord came to Solomon as for this temple you're building, as for this church we're building on Russell Street, if you follow my decrees, observe my laws, keep all my commands, obey them, I will fulfill through you the promise I gave to David, your father. I will live among the Israelites, will not abandon my people. Check out what it says in verse 14. So Solomon built the temple and completed it. I believe we've built this place to a certain level, but I believe God is calling us to a new place of completing completing it. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7, continuing on the story, Solomon completes it. It says in verse 1, 2 Chronicles 7 verse 1, when Solomon finished praying, fire came down from heaven, consumed the burning, burnt offering and sacrifices. The glory of God came. The priests could not enter the temple of the Lord because of the glory that filled it. See, when you complete something as an act of worship and surrender, a trust that we put of a seed unto God, there's a blessing and a grace that comes upon it. There's a miracle. I'm inviting all of us now. We've seen a few miracles, but now I want you to be a part of making a miracle and seeing the fullness of God come during this season. There's a miracle that comes with completion. A presence of favor and faith that is re received only when we come through with our commitments. You know, over this last few weeks, I've had different businesses reach out to us 
and say that they would like to hire our venue to, in fact, one of them has emailed us a few times. I would love to say yes for multiple reasons because I think it's a wise way of using our resources. It's a source of income and it helps with covering the ongoings of this house. I think that's, that's good stewardship. How many of you would agree? But the other thing is it's also positioning us again in our community. Both of those businesses have little children and parents and families coming. So I see having a cafe opening when they're using the facility to con connect with the parents. It's all a seat. But the truth, Delport Church, is we are not still in, in a safe, in the most safest setting to really open up this place even to hire it out. We can use it because we are using it and we know where to go. We know where not to go. We know where to put signages and block passages, but it's not the most hireable at the moment. And so as part of completing it, that's also what we're saying yes to, that it, uh, that it makes this place appropriate for us to reach, reach out to our community, to reach out to the schools around us if they need a venue, if they need a hall, if they're having a graduation, all sorts of things as an opportunity. Again, yes, there's an element of stewardship, but it's again sowing a seed. The more legs that walk through the foyer, the more people will be sitting on the seats. And so we must understand this, that we are sowing a seed. We're not giving to a building, we're giving to a harvest. We're giving to a harvest. We're giving to hundreds of people that'll receive Jesus. As I was thinking about this message, as I was preparing it, I was reminded of a situation that happened in our family many years ago. Elise is turning eight, end of this year. But I remember the year she was born, 2014, December. I think around the middle part of the year, Leah was a couple of months pregnant. And during the season, we were in an incredible season of transition. We, hadn't, we were not pastoring a church. We hadn't planted Downport Church. We were not even thinking about Downport at that point. Uh, I, had, I, was, uh, I, had a, I had a pastoral role elsewhere, but I'd stepped down from that role. So I had six months at that point without any pay. I was literally just traveling, completely living by faith. So, you know, before we make a sandwich, we say a prayer or two. You know what I'm saying? It's sort of that situation, living by faith. Uh, and, and, and in the middle of that, Leah comes to me and she says, Alwyn, you know, we've, it's our first baby. Leah's excited. We're excited. It's amazing. Well, you know, uh, we're buying books and, you know, buying this and buying, you know, you know how you prepare for your first baby. It's incredible, right? It's like it's, you prepare more than if you were graduating. And so uh, Leah says, um, I, when I want us to have like a nursery or like a mother's room or something in the house, right? So I'm like, what's that, right? She's like, oh, you know, there's this thing where you've got a dedicated room that you've got to do up for your baby. You've got to paint it, put stickers, make it, you know, if it's a girl, make it pink. If it's, pink. If it's a boy, make it blue. Uh, you know, it needs to have a crib. It needs to have a cradle. It needs to have this thing. It needs to have all these, all, all the nappies ready. It's got vacuum sealed, uh, uh, you know, way of getting rid of any, any dirty nappies. It's all happening. It's like, Leah, I was really young when I was born, but I don't remember having a nursery of my own. She said, no, no, no. This is how it is. Right? She's on Pinterest. She's on YouTube, right? Just showing me all these things. I was just like, what's wrong with, what's wrong with Elise just sleeping with us? It's not like she'll know the difference, right? Like, she's like let her just sleep with us, right? Let's sleep between us. No, no, Alwyn, you'll crush her. You're too big, right? So no, 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 she needs to have her own room. And then Elise, Alwyn, you got, Elise needs a swaddling blanket. What's a swaddling blanket? She explains to me what it is. It's like, Elise could just wear one of my t-shirts, right? Like, <laughs> like. <laughs> Like there's enough heat and perfume and warmth in it and, you know, enough generation of power in there for her to feel swaddled. She'll even feel my presence even when I'm absent. So, and she's like, no, 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 she needs, so she's talking all these things. And, and finally she shows me this family that does it on YouTube and I'm like, but it wasn't what I saw on YouTube that moved me. It was the mother's heart for an unborn child. It was the mother's love for an unborn child. And you know what? Just with that, I did whatever in my power to gain that extra couple of grand we needed to, to get the room ready. I'm with you. I, I'm not sure how excited Elise is about this. I'm not sure if Elise will remember any of this, but I know you will. And it's not even about you. It's not even about you impressing people. It's about your love for this child. And here's what I'm trying to say. See, and I want to read this because I put this in my notes and I want to make sure 
I, get, I say it right, the love that Leah poured in into that room was a statement of our preparation for this unborn child. And I'm going to say this, the love we pour into this building is going to be a reflection of the love we have for an unborn soul. The love that we have for this building, the completion that we're going to put into this place is going to be a statement of our love for an unborn soul. And you know, I was thinking about this. I praise God for orphanages. And if you've had any history or any, 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 any sort of linkages with orphanages, I honor you, I respect you, I praise God. I know friends that have gone through the systems and been in different foster homes and things like that. But if you're ever looking or driving by an orphanage or anything, you'll have this send marks orphanage. There'll be a sign that says, right, special home for kids and this sort of stuff, right? There's always a sign. The signage is everywhere, orphanage, orphanage. You can go into there and it's as home as it'll ever be, but it's not home. And you've got a nurturing home, which is my home, which is your home, which is our home. But I could almost say none of you have a, when you walk into your home, none of you are saying, it's my home. This is my home. Welcome home. Here is home. Feels like home. This is home. Why? Because you feel it. You've made it home. And I think so many times in church, due to a lack of not making it home, we've got to put a million signages that say, welcome home. This is home. Feels like home. This is your houses. What if we create a place that just feels like home? What if we actually make it home so that lost people, when they come, they know it is home. This is what I was born for. This is the place that I'm going to find my safety. This is the place that I'm going to find my nurturing. This is the place I'm going to find my healing. But that's not even going to become, that's not going to happen by just putting marble floors out there. I'm not even talking about that. That comes by the heart of a mother that says, I want to create a home for the unborn soul. This is why this building is significant because it's a spiritual, it sounds very practical, but it honestly is not practical. It's, it's a spiritual statement. It's a spiritual reflection of where we say this really matters because souls really matter because that's what heaven looks for. And I want us to give us an invitation to set our hearts and say, praise God. We, church, we've gotten here so far. Some of you have sacrificed. Some of you have been part of the journey for the last six years, last five years. Some of you have just arrived in the last three months, the last two months, the last one month. It does not matter when we've arrived. Some of us have been part of season of giving, but so many of us are going to be a part of the future. And our kids are going to be part of the future. And I want to give us the opportunity to say, you know what? I want to be a part of this. I want to be a part of in the middle of a recession, in the middle of a famine, in the middle of a drought, in the middle of pain, we're going to do this. And we're going to see a miracle come to pass. And I want to encourage us. We're going to give more details in the days to come. But before that, I want to speak into our hearts. And maybe you're here this morning and you're like, well, I'm new here. And, and, and I'm glad you're here if you're new. Because this whole conversation is actually about you. We're doing this for you. We want to make sure you're taken care of. We want to make sure you're nurtured. We want to make sure you're loved. We want to make sure you're protected. We want to make sure your kids are safe. We want to make sure the safety measures for our children. That's why. So this is not just a message for the tried and trusted, tested, the people that call Dampo home. No, no, no. This is for all of us. We can make a difference. I wonder, and, and, and church, the reality is there is an urgency. I, I don't feel in my heart that this is an end of the year project. I feel I would love if in the next two months we could smash a few things out. I feel God is calling for incredible focus, incredible grace. God is calling us to step in, to be a part. Of, for two and a half years, the enemy has smashed us, slaughtered us, tried to destroy us, tried to strip the church, the church globally. Even you, We don't even need to go there, but... We know even globally, it's not stopped. The attack on churches and the things that's happening. And so many times we can come under the tide of that, the weariness of that. Pastor Leah said, let us not grow weary in doing good because in the right season, I feel we're entering the right season where the reward is on its way. But there needs to be a last, there's, there's going to be a thrust that, that, that I feel God is compelling us to. I've led you so far. 
but let's see the completion. David has come and done his thing. Now Solomon needs to finish it. Solomon needs to finish it. Solomon, and there's a grace and a glory and an anointing and a presence that will be so magnanimous when we see it. And I believe it because God, only God, only heaven, even I won't, I apologize, but only God will know your sacrifice and God will honor your sacrifice and the windows of heaven will open every time we sacrifice. And so church, I want to encourage us. Let's not just give into a building. Let's give into the future. Let's make a statement with this building that is so loud, that is so obvious, that we say to our community, we're here to, say, we're here to stay. We're not pulling back. We're moving forward. We're pressing onwards because there are thousands on the other side of our generosity, thousands on the other side of our sacrifices, thousands on the other side of our worship that will discover this Jesus that we're talking about. Amen. And I just want to pray with us for a moment. And I just pray that Holy Spirit would speak to each one of us in a special way. I know if you're anything like me, whenever I hear a message like this, you'd like to give, be given a date. You'd like to be given a number. And we will get into that in the days to come. I feel with Easter around the corner, I don't want to get too much into the details, but I just wanted to drop a seed of, of partnership, drop a seed that says, Let, let's be thinking, let's be thinking, let's be praying, let's be seeking, let's be in fasting, let's believe that we can see a shift. And I believe we will. I believe you, Bill. I believe the right people. I was praying all week, God, let the people that, I know there are people watching us online too. We've got incredible uh, French, friends that watch us online and people that watch us online and you've been part of this. And I even want to reach out to you and say, you can be a part of this, that there's no distance in the kingdom of God and you can be a part of this. Maybe you're saying, I need to be a part of this. I need to be a part of making sure this word continues, the mission continues, the word goes out from this house because it's this place that provides for even the gospel to go out to where you are, to where the word is. And, and there's so much to be thankful about what we're sitting on right now because it's grace that's taken us so far and it's only grace that can carry us. And so Father, I pray for each and every person that's in this room and that's online. And I pray right now that you would lead us, Holy Spirit, that you would drop a thought, an idea, a concept. Lord, I do not know how we're going to reach where we need to reach. I know what we need. I have an idea, but I don't know how it's going to happen. But you're going to drop in each one of us a strategy. You're going to drop in each one of us a number, a figure, a sacrifice, a thought, an act of faith, whatever we want to call it, and say, you know what, I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to be a part of this and be a part of making difference to see many thousands saved. And they will point back and we look at the history of downpour as 2022 being a defining year where people stood up and said, let's see this into its completion. Lord, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We thank you, God, for this invitation of architectural evangelism to use this building as a seed to reach our city and our community that many would never walk through into a Sunday, would walk in on a Monday to a Friday and would receive Jesus through unique, strategic, kingdom-minded ways. We give you all the glory. In your name we pray. Everybody say, Amen.